Good evening. My name is Denise Gitsum, and it's an honor to be here tonight with you all. By way of background, I'm half Chinese, 38 years old, a native Californian, the daughter of immigrants, and an attorney who worked at a renewable energy company prior to launching my own tech-focused PR firm. I'm also a graduate of one of the most liberal law schools in the nation, Georgetown, and attended Bowdoin College and Hillary Clinton's alma mater, Wellesley. And now you're probably wondering whether security has been notified and whether a code pink incident is about to go down. So let me put your hearts at ease. I'm one of you. I love my country, thank God that I live in it, and committed to promoting our core principles because I believe that they are the reason America remains a shining city on the hill. I also believe that there are many more like me whose backgrounds, languages, words, actions, clothing, music, religion, and lifestyles may differ from what we consider mainstream conservative, but who would self-identify as conservatives if they understood what that meant. This theory was proven true in 2000 when I worked on Governor George W. Bush's campaign. I'm just ambiguously ethnic enough to pass for almost anything, and as a result, ended up as the Hispanic Coalition's coordinator. One of my responsibilities was figuring out how to speak to Latino voters in a way that resonated with them and help them realize without party affiliations or labels that they were, in fact, conservatives. We did this most effectively through a one-pager that listed conservative and liberal values without labeling them as such and asked them to check those they most identified with. The results confirmed what we already knew, that Hispanics are, in fact, fiscal and social conservatives. They just hadn't realized it yet. I learned two important lessons that year when we won a record 39% of the Latino vote. First, that it's our job to articulate the principles that we stand for in ways that everyone can relate to. And second, everyone wants to be invited to be part of something greater than themselves. So we must be intentional about inviting them to participate in the democratic process. I know this to be true from personal experience. My mother moved from Taiwan to America in 1969. My father is a Canadian immigrant who served 20 years in the US Air Force. Both of my parents came to America, and specifically California, because it was a land of unparalleled opportunity. That was true of California then, but it's getting harder and harder to say that with any conviction today. So I'm fighting back to win the San Diego-based 52nd Congressional District and help restore that vision of our nation and state. And I had the pleasure of doing so by applying the very lessons I learned in 2000, this time in my own district and with my own people, as every one in five voters in my district is of Asian descent. When I speak to my Asian constituents, I feel a natural kinship based on our shared cultural heritage. But I also recognize their hopes and dreams as being similar to every other American's. They want a level playing field that gives them equal opportunities to succeed and frees them from heavy taxation, burdensome regulations, and undue interference. They want lower taxes so they can hire more people and invest more money back into their businesses. They want to win on their merits, innovate without fear, and they want their children to compete on a level playing field without being discriminated against for exceeding an Asian quota. None of this is surprising to me. I understand their mentality. But what does surprise me, what does surprise me is that now it's 2016, fully 16 years after the 2000 election, and still most of my Asian constituents tell me that this is the very first time they've ever been asked to participate in a campaign. My district will ultimately be won or lost based on the swing Asian vote. It's imperative that we give them a good reason to believe in our vision of America, enough to get out and vote on election day, and enough to call themselves conservatives every single day. But it's equally important. In fact, I believe it's a moral imperative that every American reach out and not only invite, but welcome those of every background to participate in our democratic process. In the free market of ideas, our conservative principles will always prevail. We will only lose if we never try. Thank you so much, and God bless you all.